Section 42 of the Promulgation of Universal Peace, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater. The Promulgation of Universal Peace, Volume 1, by Abdul Baha Abbas. Section 42. Discourses of Abdul Baha delivered in New York and Brooklyn, June 11th, 1912, at 780 West End Avenue, New York. Home of Mr. and Mrs. E. B. Kinney. Open committee meeting. Notes by Howard McNutt. It is my hope that the meetings of the Baha'i Assembly in New York shall become like meetings of the supreme concourse. When you assemble, you must reflect the lights of the heavenly kingdom. Let your hearts be as mirrors in which the radiance of the sun of reality is visible. Each bosom must be a telegraph station, one terminus of the wire attached to the soul, the other fixed in the supreme concourse so that inspiration may descend from the kingdom of Abhal and questions of reality be discussed. Then opinions will coincide with truth. Day by day there will be progression and the meetings become more radiant and spiritual. This attainment is conditioned upon unity and agreement. The more perfect the love and agreement, the more the divine confirmations and assistance of the blessed perfection will descend. May this prove to be a divine meeting, and may boundless bestowals come down upon you. Strive with all your hearts and with the very power of life that unity and love may continually increase. In discussions, look toward the reality without being self-opinionated. Let no one assert and insist upon his own mere opinion. Nay, rather, let each investigate the reality with the greatest love and fellowship. Consult upon every matter, and when one presents the point of view of the reality itself, that shall be acceptable to all. Then will spiritual unity increase among you, individual illumination will be greater happiness more abundant and you will draw nearer and nearer to the kingdom of god two june eleventh nineteen twelve at three o nine west seventy eighth street new york notes by howard mcnutt we have just returned from a visit to philadelphia spending two nights there and speaking in two large churches. The weather proved unpleasant and affected my health. The purpose in these movements here and there is a single purpose. It is to spread the light of truth in this dark world. On account of my age, it is difficult to journey. Sometimes the difficulties are arduous, but out of love for the friends of God, and with desire to sacrifice myself in the pathway of God, I bear them in gladness. The purpose is the result which is accomplished, love and unity among mankind. For the world is dark with discord and selfishness. Hearts are negligent. Souls bereft of God and his heavenly bestowals man is submerged in the affairs of this world his aims objects and attainments are mortal whereas god desires for him immortal accomplishments in his heart there is no thought of god he has sacrificed his portion and birthright of divine spirituality desire and passion like two unmanageable horses have wrested the reins of control from him and are galloping madly in the wilderness. This is the cause of the degradation of the world of humanity 
this is the cause of its retrogression into the appetites and lusts of the animal kingdom instead of divine advancement we find sensual captivity and debasement of heavenly virtues of the soul by devotion to the carnal mortal world human susceptibilities sink to the level of animalism what are the animal's propensities to eat drink wander about and sleep the thoughts the minds of the animals are confined to these they are captives in the bonds of these desires man becomes a prisoner and slave to them when his ultimate desire is no higher than his welfare in this world of the senses consider how difficult for man is the attainment of pleasures and happiness in this mortal world how easy it is for the animal look upon the fields and flowers prairies streams forests and mountains the grazing animals the birds of the air the fishes neither toil nor undergo hardships they sow not nor are they concerned about the reaping they have no anxiety about business or politics no trouble or worry whatsoever all the fields and grasses all the meadows of fruits and grains all the mountain slopes and streams of salubrious water belong to them they have no labor for their livelihood and happiness because everything is provided and made possible for them if the life of man be confined to this physical material outlook the animal's life is a hundred times better easier and more productive of comfort and contentment the animal is nobler more serene and confident because each hour is free from anxiety and worriment but man restless and dissatisfied runs from morn till eve sailing the seas diving beneath them in submarines flying aloft in aeroplanes delving into the lowest strata of the earth to obtain his livelihood all with the greatest difficulty anxiety and unrest therefore in this respect the animal is nobler more serene poised and confident consider the birds in the forest and jungle how they build their nests high in the swaying treetops build them with the utmost skill and beauty swinging rocking in the morning breezes drinking the pure sweet water enjoying the most enchanting views as they fly here and there high overhead singing joyously all without labor free from worry care and forebodings if man's life be confined to the elemental physical world of enjoyment one lark is nobler more admirable than all humanity because its livelihood is prepared its condition complete its accomplishment perfect and natural but the life of man is not so restricted it is divine eternal not mortal and sensual for him a spiritual existence and livelihood is prepared and ordained in the divine creative plan his life is intended to be a life of spiritual enjoyment to which the animal can never attain this enjoyment depends upon the acquisition of heavenly virtues the sublimity of man is his attainment of the knowledge of god the bliss of man is the acquiring of heavenly bestowals which descend upon him in the outflow of the bounty of god the happiness of man is in the fragrance of the love of god this is the highest pinnacle of attainment in the human world how preferable to the animal and its hopeless kingdom therefore consider how base a nature it reveals in man that notwithstanding the favors showered upon him by god he should lower himself into the animal sphere be wholly occupied with material needs attached to this mortal realm imagining that the greatest happiness 
is to attain wealth in this world. How purposeless, how debased is such a nature. God has created man in order that he may be a dove of the kingdom, a heavenly candle, a recipient of life eternal. God has created man in order that he may be resuscitated through the breaths of the Holy Spirit and become the light of the world. How debase the soul which can find enjoyment in this darkness occupied with itself, the captive of self and passion, wallowing in the mire of the material world. How degraded is such a nature! What an ignorance this is! What a blindness! How glorious the station of man who has partaken of the heavenly food and builded the temple of his everlasting residence in the world of heaven. The manifestations of God have come into the world to free man from these bonds and chains of the world of nature. Although they walked upon the earth, they lived in heaven. They were not concerned about material sustenance and prosperity of this world. Their bodies were subjected to inconceivable distress, but their spirits ever soared in the highest realms of ecstasy. The purpose of their coming, their teaching and suffering, was the freedom of man from himself. Shall we therefore follow in their footsteps, escape from this cage of the body, or continue subject to its tyranny? Shall we pursue the phantom of a mortal happiness which does not exist, or turn toward the tree of life and the joys of its eternal fruits? I have come to this country in the advanced years of my life, undergoing difficulties of health and climate because of excessive love for the friends of God. It is my wish that they may be assisted to become servants of the heavenly kingdom, captives in the service of the will of God. This captivity is freedom. This sacrifice is glorification. This labor is reward. This need is bestowal. For service in love for mankind is unity with God. He who serves has already entered the kingdom and is seated at the right hand of his Lord. End of section 42. Recorded by Nicholas James Bridgewater on June 11th, 2014 in Oxford, England.